Hi guys, welcome back to Freedom News Network. Thanks for watching. We stand for truth, we stand for justice, we stand for freedom of speech. Uh, freedom of speech that flies in the face of all adversity. Political correctness in this country has arguably gone mad. Uh, it's taking over. Uh, it's policing our speech. They're legislating our speech, what we can and can't say. Now look, I can understand uh, in certain areas where this may be valid, in the area of um, you know, racially vilifying somebody, etc. Um, but we, we refuse to adhere to any demands for political correctness other than those that are strictly enshrined in uh, legislation. Former Minister for Health and Aging, former Prime Minister Tony Abbott defended his position in rejecting uh, Gardazel from being added to the PBS subsidised schedule uh, following his concerns that it may be completely ineffective and may even contribute to cancer rates. He made these claims after the Pharmaceutical Benefits Advisory Committee, which is a committee under the Department of Health and Aging, uh, came to the same conclusion. This is also most likely the reason that Tony Abbott said that he was not in a rush to go and get his own daughters vaccinated with the Gardasil immunisation. Dr Deirdre Little, a highly respected and well-renowned GP uh, in New South Wales, claims that she was asked by a patient to do some research on the Gardasil immunisation to uh, provide her with proper medical advice on whether it had contributed to the disease or condition that she was suffering from at that time. Uh, Dr. Deirdre Little did mountains of research into the Gardasil vaccination and goes on the record stating that she was unable to find sufficient information about this, uh, any studies to do with the Gardasil immunization being given to mice. And uh, also, surpri not surprisingly, but disturbingly, she was unable to find sufficient studies done on safety uh, of the Gardasil vaccination in humans. Dr. Deirdre goes on to conclude that as a GP and having researched what information is available and also importantly what information is not available in regards to Gardasil, uh, she does not think that there is enough information in government handouts in order for parents to provide proper full consent for their child to receive this. Now if there is no data uh, to vouch for the safety of this vaccine, uh, it's probably more accurately labelled as a live experiment. Now, even Dr. Oz, I don't particularly hold in high regard as a physician, um, but he himself says that he's, he's not going to request that his wife get his own four children vaccinated. Now, the Gardasil vaccination was actually created in Australia, and um, many studies have been done, independent studies, which have uh, brought into question its effectiveness. It still remains on the national schedule, uh, and many people in Australia believe that this is due to a conflict of interest, which involves many high up uh, parliamentarians having personal financial interests and also their spouses sitting on the boards of large pharmaceutical companies personally profiting uh, from mandatory vaccine schedules. Uh, so one, like usual people, we're not going to cast our conclusions, we're not going to comment on such rumours, uh, but it is certainly a, um, a reoccurring narrative within Australia amongst the public that this is a, a very popular opinion so it certainly needs to be expressed. One final question I have in regards to vaccines, Gardasil in particular but other vaccines as well, are the doctors providing adequate medical advice to their patients? Are the doctors allowed to follow the advice on the insert of the packet? Are they allowed to uh, not give the vaccine to a pregnant mother? Are they allowed to refuse to give the vaccine to a vulnerable child? Uh, do they properly inform their patients of the risks involved in this medical procedure? Uh, I've been to the, the doctor before. I've had medical procedures. Even, even the most routine procedures, they usually warn you about the possible side effects or the possible negative repercussions of uh, undergoing this procedure. 
Uh, for such a major procedure as receiving a vaccination shot, or even more shots, even multiple shots in one, into your system, do you believe you're provided with adequ adequate advice on such an important medical decision? Do they go through a list of the side effects? Do they go through a list of the possible complications? Do they fully inform the patient? That question I will leave up to you. Please let me know what you think in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, share, and uh, also subscribe. We look forward to um, updating you further in the future on vaccines and many other topics. God bless and good night.